Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, <laughs> it's funny, back in the day, and I just realized that I was, people kept saying, are you going to, your two year anniversary of your channel is coming up, are you going to do something? I go, yeah, I'm going to do something, and then it just slipped my mind, and <laughs> now it is, It's a two, I started it on uh, April 12th of 2017, um, but uh, anyway, uh, back in the day when I started it, I kind of ran through some ideas I had and then after like a week or so I kind of ran out of ideas like oh what do I do and I would like go on bleeding cool to see if anything cringy happened uh but now it's just like so this unstoppable wasp I was going to do this morning and then the Star Wars trailer dropped and then got the idea for this video and then there's another one about the image they're trying to help comic stores but they're um what do you call it they're not they're not dealing with the elephant in the room um so I got enough videos to last until Sunday um, but uh, so uh, I was watching this video and I'm working through my watch later because I have priorities in life I got my watch later down to 11 videos I'm very proud of myself um, this guy is talking about um, you know is Mission Impossible the best action franchise I'd, I'd probably say so I it's my favorite franchise of them all but then he starts talking about other stars in other franchises we can leave stuff like James Bond because that's had multiple stars. But if you do something like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Fast and Furious, and Die Hard, um, one of the things they usually do is they kind of uh, spend more money for less profit or dimin diminishing returns. Um, and then also the the stars become so famous that you know they have controversy and, and you know Johnny Depp's had all this stuff happen. Vin Diesel really stays out of trouble, doesn't he? He does. I don't remember him ever, like, a nothing. Uh, man, that Street Sharks commercial he did back in the day, that really set him on the path to success. <laughs> um, but, uh, so they were talking about, you know, usually success ends up causing problems, uh, you know, the star gets arrogant you spend too much money you kind of forget what your focus is and then uh he talks about the mission impossible and he talks about these are very interesting because they actually got better and more focused and more popular and more profitable over the years and this is 20 plus years and then he brought up something that i kind of forgot about is that uh tom cruise like 10 15 years ago he was like a laughing stock. He was a joke. He hadn't had like major controversies, but he had like to jump the couch and he would say weird things and, and everyone would kind of obsess about the Scientology thing. Um, and there was like a five year period in between Mission Impossible movies. So he basically talked about how Cruz fixed his career, fixed his reputation by just concentrating on professionalism. He basically dipped out of you know public life, very few interviews, and, and when he does the interviews, they're very controlled. But he actually took control. He he he's um, you know the the producer. He does all the hiring for the the writers and the directors or the writer directors, and he's basically concentrated. And I was like, that sounds familiar because that's actually what I've been trying to do, and it, it's been working out pretty good. I just basically like. Don't say stupid stuff, <laughs> stay out of trouble, wake up, work on your books, plan the next one, you know, maintain relationships, and it's going it's going pretty good so far. I'm, I'm really happy with it. And then someone else, because um, I, I, I was very encouraged, you know, from, you know, hearing, you know, you, know, you, can, you, you can repair your reputation by focusing on professionalism. I, I noticed this in the Marines. You know, uh, you have characters or characters characters, people, Marines, who would like ruin their reputation. DUIs, they go AWOL, they get busted down in rank. And then I noticed something amazing. You only had to whoop it on, which means do a good job, for like two months and your reputation was fixed. It was very, it was a very harsh environment, but it was very fair. And the funny thing is, you know, there is a lot of kind of like a peer pressure shark attack thing. Once pr someone is shown to be weak or vulnerable, there is kind of, you know, like a thing. Like, let's all dog them out. You know, this is 
survival of the fittest. It's, it's a harsh realm. But it's also very fair. And I would even notice that if someone was a shipper and then they whooped it on and they repaired their reputation, if someone tried to bring up old shit, like stuff from three and a half months ago, everyone would dog him out. They're like, what the F is wrong with you? That was like three months ago, dude. Um, so it was very encouraging to have like a, a like a path and a model that I can follow. Um, and then the, because uh, uh, I also think Cruz was around my age now when he had all those problems like 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but then anyway, um, people have been sending me um, other uh, screenshots of Sean Gordon Murphy. I guess he's been going on a lot of like, um, whatever you call this when you do tweets and you number them. Usually that's associated with manifestos, but he's a very like even tempered guy. So just, I'm a huge fan of Sean Gordon Murphy. Not only his art, which I've been a fan of for, I don't know, five years or so. He, I mean, I know he's been in for a while, but I didn't really notice him. And then I was kind of totally out of comics because I was poor. And then I got an IT, I had some disposable income and I saw, you know, his new work on the stands, but his writing is actually fantastic. And I think he said he's done with, he's never going to work with um, writers again. He's just going to do his own thing, which is good because he's worked with good writers, but he never really got their good scripts. Like he works with Mark Miller, who I generally like, and but he gets this stupid like time bros. It was, that was, I mean, it wasn't, it was lighthearted trash, but it was trash, you know, not to be too maudlin, but what do you get? What do you get? You get 60, 70, 80 years on this planet, maybe 90. Uh, don't waste your six months to a year drawing time bros. <laughs> but anyway, now he's really concentrating. He's on these great projects. He's respect of everyone, but he's really, really good with people. And I want to roll back him being very successful as a writer and artist and him being, uh, what is, uh, I was just watching that clip from Zoolander. Uh, at the Derek Zoolander school, we teach your uh, kid to be a professional model and a professional human. Sean Gordon Murphy, something like that. Sean Gordon Murphy is a professional human. He's very even tempered and normal. Um, I gotta say, I do think this is too much abs for this version of, cause he wears like a, he wears like a, Bulletproof vest. I don't know. It's like a little too absy, um, or serratus or whatever that is. But anyway, um, he's he he basically did three of these. I usually call them screeds because it's usually people freaking out. These are uh, calm, so we'll we'll call them threads. Um, and they level up. Each one gets better than the last one, just like Rambo movies. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to skim this one because, okay, so uh, I've been asked a few times about my rules for approaching Twitter. Here they are if anyone's interested. Please remember these are my personal rules. I'm not judging anyone who chooses to handle Twitter differently. So obviously I had some Twitter problems. <laughs> uh, like I've said about Twitter, Twitter is only good for people who have very, very even tempers. If you don't have a very, very even temper and a very solid sense of yourself, you're gonna be pulled to one extremism or another. That's kind of actually what Brian uh, Edward Hill's uh, American Carnage is about. So uh, Sean says, I mostly use Twitter as a way to reach out to readers, sell books and advertise my products in a professional way. I try to keep my posts positive. I try to avoid what, he basically says, I don't post that much so my posts are yet noticed. He cleans up his timeline once a week. Um, that's actually, people don't have a problem with that, but for some reason, YouTube, like, you can never delete a video. Your most staunch fan will flip out and start making accusations if you take down a video. It's like, why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? What are you trying to hide? And I was like, it, it was a glitchy upload, <laughs> like, um, with this uh, screen capture. Sometimes the screen capture, it'll, um, I don't know how it does this. I don't understand the tech of it. But even though I'm looking at the screen right now, it'll, like, glitch out between both of these tabs and sometimes the, the background. So sometimes I just take it down, but oh my gosh, there is ne <laughs> never a good reason. Um, so he says, uh, uh, 
I believe you reap what you sow. Being positive usually means getting positive feedback. Um, he doesn't scan Twitter to be outraged. 99% uh, of people tweeting are nice. I don't. He doesn't block. He mutes. Um, he does get scrappy every now and then, but he tries to dial it back. This is a big one. I try to remember Twitter isn't as important as we think. 90% of my readers probably aren't following me or seeing my announcements. So um, a couple months ago, I got uh, recognized at a comic shop by a couple. And it was kind of the height of me being stalked. So I was paranoid. <laughs> and so they're a very nice couple. And they started talking and I just kind of like started like spilling my guts. So I was like, yeah, I can't do this because X, Y, and Z. And they just, they just had like the most blank expression because they, uh, they weren't aware of any of this. All they do is watch my videos and they're fans, but they don't watch all of them. So Twitter is not that big of a deal. Um, I left it, my videos, the, the views didn't go down. Uh, actually, the only hurt, only thing that ever hurt my uh, my ends, my scrill, uh, is uh, when I changed the name. For some reason, changing your name, my views didn't go down, but my, you know, my gold coins decreased significantly. I don't know what, what's up with the algorithm and why they do that, but they finally started catching back up again. Basically, you don't need Twitter. Uh, it's um, promotional value is vastly overrated. Most people don't use it, and the people who do use it, most of them just barely use it every now and they'll glance at it. The people that spend all day on Twitter, uh, that's not even 1%. They, 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 they're, it's a rounding error. They don't matter. So then he finishes up, I believe cool heads prevail. It's okay to be upset at something and react how you wish, but if most of your tweets are not keeping a cool head, then there's a good chance you're hurting comics Twitter, and most of us are here for the love of comics not to feel angry. So just great thing. Um, so moving on, I, I know people always say that they can't hear the AC, but it's driving me insane. So I'm gonna go turn it off really quick. Okay, so um, yeah, yeah, this whole thing about Twitter and then we get some more good art from him. He likes cars. Being a normal person and hanging out with people like a normal person. Damn, so he's been hitting the gym. Okay, so I'm right now in a, in a cutting phase, as they say. So I've lost a lot of uh, fat and a lot of muscle. Oh, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. I mean, yeah, so I'm probably going to hit my weight loss fat goal at the end of this month and I'm going to be back in the gym. So sharing art, sharing a thing that's what is this? They're making a statue. Is he complaining about the flat butt? Okay. So, uh, more art. Is this, um, oh, oh, it's from the next one. Cool. Um, uh, the, the sequel is called Curse of the White Knight. I don't know. It has Azrael in it. Um, look at this. Curse of the White Knight. Yeah. Process. You know, process is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you're going to show something in different stages of development. These are um, fairly tight pencils, but I wouldn't call these finished pencils. When you ink yourself, you can just kind of give yourself a, an estimation of the, the things like the rendering and the hatching and the, and the shading. That'll probably, honestly, that's a pretty good uh, M16. I guess it'd be an A1 with that heat shield up front. It's got the forward assist though, so uh, I think that's an M16A2 with M16A1 uh, hand guards. But uh, anyway, then uh, later he does it. Um, so then he starts talking about this other thing about, this one's not that big deal. It's about uh, artists, wow, look at that. Do you see how much, do you see how much he kind of allowed for himself? We'll, we'll go back. So look at that, and you can see it's just very basic. And then look how much different it is. He put in all of this, you know, uh, hatching on the forearm, texturing on the uh, uh, forearm guard, whatever you call that. Um, all these extra folds in the cape. 
just putting all of this into a shadow that's man that looks fantastic Azrael looks so cool i was i was reading the comics when the Azrael storyline came out it started out with a really cool uh uh mini series by denny o'neill and uh joe casada with kevin nolan doing inks really good stuff anyway getting getting to the finesse king uh part um uh okay so i guess he does a a reference to um what do you call it batman 1989 in the script where he's like let's get nuts by the way i just remembered i put in a reference and nobody ever got it i i actually checked to make sure i had the right number i did the warren g and nate dog uh you know uh was it 16 in the clip and one in the hole. I put that in iron sights and nobody ever noticed. I'm really kind of sad. Um, so then he's talking about this other thing. He uh, thanked Doug Tanapel. Um, and then I get a bunch of people were there to concern troll him for talking to a garbage person on the wrong side of history. Doug's a great guy. These couple, just, I'll, just, I'll just go over this one really quickly. There's no such thing as morality police in most parts of almost every single Western country. Number two, if the job of morality police, morality police did exist, the people who nominate themselves for it <laughs> would be the first to be disqualified. Um, uh, so he's talking about writer summons. This is just kind of like sour grapes. Artists get bothered. They're not invited to writer summits. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't really care, but he handles it very um, uh, well. And he basically says, just, Stop harassing Doug and Heather. Um, so this is where it gets good. Um, so Sean Gordon Murphy gets targeted every... the the One of the things I've learned about having stalkers is that they're not obsessed with you. They're obsessed with being obsessed. They need a target, and you might bring yourself into their crosshairs with a mistake or stupidity or it might be random happenstance sometimes they get bored of their original target and they move they cast about for another one so sean gordon murphy's gone and i think i've done videos on this two or three times in the last year or so they've sjw's have targeted him and he's always just finessed him <laughs> he's finessed him onto someone else um and, and and that's how you do it you do it so you know back if, if you remember the 80s if you were alive back then uh uh, Ronald Reagan had this finesse move. He'd he'd take uh he'd take uh questions from um journalists while he was by Marine One, the helicopter. And then if there was a question he didn't like, he'd just be like, Oh, the helicopter. <laughs> I can't hear you because of the helicopter. Just like point at the rotors. Uh so uh this is just great. Like this one I wanted to do the what is the Orson Welles uh Citizen King uh Kane, not Kang, um, uh, Citizen Kane clap emoji. So what I'm saying is Sean Gordon Murphy's gotten targeted a couple times. And the thing is, these people that target people and obsess and try to destroy people, they, even if they can't destroy you, they, they kind of will get you one day. <laughs> um, so uh, he says, and to any pro who doesn't like what I'm saying, the ones in the DM whisper chains. So he's talking about the whisper network. So we have confirmation from someone at the top, top, top that yes, the whisper networks are a real thing. I mean, Tess Fowler and what's the woman who drew, uh, she drew why the last man, they basically like in so many words just very bluntly admitted that the whisper network is, you know, something that they actively keep alive constantly. Um, but this is nice to hear a normie just say, yeah, <laughs> hey, we know about the Whisper Network. It's real. We he goes, uh, to the pros who don't like what I'm saying, the ones in the DM Whisper chains and the ones subtweeting, I only have one thing to say. Get ready for the finesse move. This is so finesse. After I say this, whatever you're wearing right now will become... A skirt and panties, and the panties will be at your ankles. You'll just be like, "Ow, oh, how did this happen? I just got finessed. Um, so he's basically saying, to all your haters plotting to take me down, I got one thing to say. Congratulations, you just won a free drink. He goes on. 
because I'm going to find you at a con and not fight, not, not get in your face, buy you a drink, he says. I'm going to play dumb and pretend not to have seen the screenshots and I'm going to win you over. Why? Going on. Because I like you and I want to work with you. And I don't care if we disagree. When DC opens up the White Knight universe next year, I want to hire the best creators we have. Um, I can't tell if that's the end or the... Sometimes they get a little weird. Okay, okay, so if you're a pro and you don't like Sean Gordon Murphy, Sean Gordon Murphy says, he wants to buy you a drink to sort it out because that's what pros do. Please retweet. This is just... And then you see a lot of uh, 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 pros uh, reacting very positively. This one was just like beautiful because this is how it's supposed to be. 2017 was crazy. I was oftentimes an asshole. Sometimes just bad judgment, not reading the room correctly. But I remember at the beginning of 2018, I was talking. I said, you know, I'm going to start going out to conventions this year. I'm going to go to a lot of them. And I know some people are, are mad at me. Um, but, you know, this is the, what do they call it? Not the goodwill. Charm offensive. It's like, you know, it, it's, it's easy to be angry at someone on the internet. It's a lot harder to be angry when they're standing in front of you. They're a regular person. They put out their hand and they, they want to shake. So I was like, I need to go do that. I need to go do a charm offensive. But uh, first I got blackmailed with the dark roast and then I released it. And then 30 hit pieces based around the dark roast, roast came out. And then just everything, the, the Mark Wade tortious interference. So almost the entire year was complete madness. Things have really calmed down. That being said, it's still not calm enough for me to go try something like that. Maybe in a year or two. So like I said, from the earlier, from the, from the Tom Cruise, you know, I know I've made some mistakes, all these type of things. And now, and some things are just bad judgment. Now it's just like... Nose to the grindstone, you wake up, you work, you work out, you walk the dog, sleep, watch Star Trek Discovery. Oh, the episode last night was horrible. She was ridiculously bad. It was literally 20 minutes of hugging and emotional validation and crying. The main character cried in five or six different scenes for five or six different reasons. We're talking about a good 35 to 45%. Well, okay, 35%. Of the screen time of one episode was the lead character crying. I couldn't cry that much if everyone I've ever met in my life was thrown into a volcano. 15 minutes in, I, my eyes are just going to run out of tears. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, like, this is how life is supposed to work. You're supposed to be able to forgive, get over things, you know... Hey, a little, give him a little punch on the sh shoulder, a little friendly punch. Ah, oh, man, you really annoyed the hell out of me last year. And then you just move on. One of the things about SJW is that they poison things is they never want to move on. These are the people who have made it semi-normal to say, so that thing you said 11 years ago <laughs> sure would be problematic if your employer found out about it. What the? 11 years ago. Um, this needs to get out there. I, I, I just think about people like, you know, that, you know, like I love their work and I just, yeah, I mean, I don't think they'll ever be able to like look at me in like a normal way. But for most people, it, it should be, you know, probably the one that I, is the one that pops in my head is like Dave Johnson. I've loved his art for 25 years. But I kind of get the feeling he probably really doesn't like me. I think I've roasted him a time or two. I laid off. But this is, this is you know, a, a, a guy whose art is freaking fantastic. I've loved it in all sorts of different things. I had this. Anyone ever see the G.I. Joe? Uh, it was a G.I. Joe cartoon written by Warren Ellis. It's so good. It came out like 10 years ago. I think he did like the designs and the backgrounds and the, this guy named Snake Bite Cortez. I, I really love these. Almost everyone I've roasted over the last two years, it's because, you know, I love your stuff, this kind of type of thing. Somebody was telling me about this with Takeshi 6 9 You know how he got big and he started making a name in the rap world? He would actually beef with people on Twitter, Instagram, and then they would start saying, he was like, 
all right, you know, show up 143rd Street, I'm gonna whoop your ass. And then he would show up and he would go into like charm offensive like crazy. He's like, hey man, sorry, I was just blizzle blast. Okay. Obviously his story did not have a happy ending, but I thought that was an interesting start to this thing. But this is how it's supposed to work, you know? You got someone beefing with you, I'm gonna kill him with kindness. That's a metaphor for some diversity in comics is giving instructions on how to murder people. Um, <laughs> kill them with kindness. It's an expression. He's like, hey, you know what? You hate me? I'm dumb. I don't know. He's Columbo. Oh, hey, yeah, I don't think you murdered anyone. Just one question. Where's your lighter? Boom, boom, boom. Uh, um, so anyway, uh, let's see some of the reactions. Um, Blake Northcott says, I like Sergeant... Oh, sorry. Sergeant Major. Sean Gordon Murphy. Uh, and I like drinks. I like both of these things quite a bit. Uh, Jason Johnson says, I'm a small pro and I like you. Can I buy you a drink? I wouldn't say he's a small pro. He, he did the third Team 7 miniseries. That's the one where he found out how Lynch lost his eye. That's the one where he found out why Cole Cash has a red mask. Um, uh, let's see if anyone else. I thought I saw a Scott Snyder. That might have been a... Uh, one of the other ones. I think that was on the third one. No, nope. Denal Delay is to other people. Okay, now I'm just gonna be weird and have to obsessively check for it. Gabriel Rodriguez. This is a great guy. He did uh, Lock and Key. Jeez. If you haven't seen Lock and Key, first of all, get to any library. Every single library I've ever been in has all the Lock and Key books, like hardcover, it's beautiful. Um, so he says, uh, what I like the most about your online interaction, Sean, is that you're not afraid of disagreements and always face it with a positive attitude. Okay, let's see if anyone else. Kurt Busiek. Okay, so people, yeah. So the interesting thing is I'm seeing people here from both sides. You know what sides I'm talking about. In fact, I pretty much recognize almost every name here. And I know both of these people are very much to one side and very much to the other. But you know what? Everyone's closer to the center. You know, do you know what, am I saying that right? People on the left and right are closer to the center than they are to extremists on the left or the right. Even the left people who are normal are closer to the middle than they are to the extremists on the left. I don't think I explained that well, but I think you still somehow know what I mean. Let me see if uh, anyone else uh, has anything interesting to say. Okay, so that looks like about it. Um, so anyway, uh, Tell me what you think uh, about this video. Uh, Sean Gordon Murphy, undisputed finesse king of the comic book industry. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. Thank you to everyone who stuck with me through two very crazy years. Well, I mean, one, one and a half crazy years. Last six months have been really chill. Hmm, what did I do six months ago? Get out of Twitter. Wow, what an amazing coincidence. You get off Twitter and then everything calms down. I get my books out. Next one's ready to go. So doing a, uh, launching an Indiegogo next week. That one's going to be for a month. It's going to be for a remastered version of Jawbreaker's Lost Souls. Glossy paper, glossy cover, so it should lie flat when you mail it. Uh, and the, Oh, the other thing. So it's going to be Gemini mailers for everyone in America. And then... Uh, for overseas, you're going to have two options. It's going to be a bubble mailer, which is, has a pretty good success rate, surprisingly. Just a regular bubble mail, mailer with some uh, chipboard. We're checking into if we can actually do backing boards. So instead of chipboard, which is this really, really thin cardboard, um, we would use uh, backing boards from, you know, when you go to the comic shop. I uh, just got to see if, you know, the, 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 the machine can take them. There's also the deal is they should be the exact same dimension as a book because if they're bigger than the book jostles around. So the chipboard, this is probably boring. The chipboard is the exact dimensions of the uh, cover because if you make it smaller, it doesn't protect the edges. But if you make it bigger, it just crumbles in and then it pushes on the edges. So it needs to be the same size. So with um, backing boards, they are usually bigger, slightly bigger than the, you know what I'm talking about. Explain that five times longer than you all understood it, like, as soon as I talk, started talking about it. So anyway, uh, I'm going to do that one, starting that one next week as soon as I get uh, the posters. And the extra books are coming in on Monday and Tuesday, so 
mail those out. Probably I'll start this one next Wednesday. And um, I think I'm going to run it until uh, May 9th. May 9th was the last day of the campaign from last year. And then Jawbreaker's God King, the next book, it's going to be ready in like July. Yeah, July. And that thing's, it's going to be done. When I start the campaign, the book is done. All I'll be finessing is the uh, the print file. Um, so that one will go to uh, print in like August. You'll probably get it in September. It's a two-month turnaround. And then I'm even going to try to get them shorter. Oh, and the, the, the Lost Souls is uh, probably even going to have less than two months. Probably have like a six-week turnaround. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And I'll have uh, more... Uh, New uh, comic reviews up tomorrow. Thanks, bye.